Today is day 18 of the lockdown, coronavirus, care, everything, all that, the pandemic, the quarantine, we're on 18 days. As you can see, the flu Manchu is coming in. I just shaved too. I shaved the chin part and my cheeks and everything. Uh, so let me say, I posted a picture today on Instagram and uh, Facebook from like 2002 of me and Ludacris. And everybody's like, dang, Gary used to be a snack. Gary used to be. I'm like, used to be, motherfuckers. What do you mean used to be? I'm still a snack. Maybe not as nutritious as it was before, but I'm still a snack, like somewhat. So anyways, uh, I thought that was funny. And Ludacris looks exactly the same, by the way. Hasn't aged a bit. I, 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 don't, I don't age terribly, but this uh, flu Manchu with all the gray is not helping my aging process by any means. Uh, so listen, yesterday I was talking about, I talked about my stepdad a little bit. And I had so many people DM and hit me in the message boards and, and Facebook hit me up uh, telling me they got similar stories of their parents and stuff. And they said, tell more stories about your stepdad. So I'm going to limit it to once a week telling a crazy stepdad story because they're endless. But I don't want these updates to be all about him. Uh, this one is uh, this one's about my wedding back in 2003. When, uh, <laughs> so this is what happened. We got married in Oakland at the first AME on Telegraph. If anybody knows Oakland, that's, that's the black part. Well, Oakland's black, 90% in the city, but this is the black, black part. First AME on Telegraph. And, um, I was a little worried because my, my stepdad's a little off his rocker. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to act up. I've seen him act too irrational too many times in my life. So I was all, I was already a little apprehensive about him coming to the wedding. But at that time, me and my mom was in a good place and he was he was acting like he was halfway okay. So th this is how our wedding happened. We get to the church and the preacher walked out. He was like, he said, I'll do it as start on time. So we, we were supposed to get married at three o'clock. Uh, I got there about about three. And then uh, I was kind of standing outside the church. And I saw the preacher going to his car. I thought he was just getting some gum or making a phone call or something. I don't know. I didn't know he got in and left, but I guess he double booked or something. He had another wedding. So, we, you know, it's a wedding. Weddings don't ever really start on time, but, and it was a black wedding too. So you knew that, you know, it wasn't going to start on time. And uh, so he walked out. So a guy named Melvin presided over the service. Uh, I guess because I walked out, and I go, "What? What's Melvin doing there?" And I found out afterwards the preacher left. So, anyways, uh, then we get the, we get to the wedding. Then we get to the reception, and you know how they announce everybody? They announce the bridesmaids and everybody, and then the bride and groom's the last people they announce. They were taking forever to announce us to walk into this ballroom, and we were just standing there, couldn't figure out why. It was like forty five minutes. We stood there. Uh, the bakery dropped our cake. The lady, it was a five-tier cake. I guess she slipped or something, and four tiers just fell off. So the only thing left was the sheet. <laughs> and they, But we didn't know because they was cleaning up the mess. Everybody was cleaning up the mess, and they didn't want my wife to know. So they were hiding it, the fact that the cake dropped. So they put the cake on. We had this, you know, like, you know how you get married, and the, everybody's elevated the, the wedding party, and then the bride and groom's in the middle. They put the cake on the very end, so we never saw it. So she didn't really see it till about an hour and a half into the reception. And then she got a little emotional, not too bad, but you know, wedding cake and everything. And so we just had the sheets, so which just me and her on the sheet and not the five tiers. So then, okay, so the preacher walked out, baker dropped our cake. We think that's the worst of it. They say, hey, we're gonna do the bouquet and the garter next after this song. So I grabbed my brother and I said, yo, man, let's let's get a beer or something. So the bar was in another room. So me and him were just sipping on a beer, nothing. All of a sudden I hear, there's a fight. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit. I knew immediately it was my stepdad. So I walked out there and sure enough, my stepdad sucker punched my real dad at the wedding reception. And at that point, the reception is basically over. It's kind of chaotic. And I remember I 
you know, I, uh, it was funny. I saw, here, here's a lot that happened because one, we got 300 wedding guests, 250 black people, 50 white people, two white guys getting a fight. What are the chances, by the way? And then uh, my, uh, I see my stepdad. I'm like, what happened? What happened? You know, it's kind of chaotic. And I was like, he goes, no, nah, Gary, you don't understand. You don't understand. And I was like, did he say something? He goes, no, nah, he looked at me funny. I was like, excuse me? Uh, so he didn't say anything. He looked at you funny? He goes, yeah, but it wasn't a normal face. It was a face like, I fucked your wife before you. I went around with Gary's growing up, and I'm still at the way. Ha, ha, ha. I said, damn, that's a hell of a face. I have never seen a face like that. What is a face that says all that? Trying to figure out what face was it that set you off. And, but I also saw a side of my wife I'd never seen before because she came up to him and she like gave him a little slap in the arm. He goes, nah. And before he can get anything out, my wife was like, uh, nah, motherfucker, you ain't in Cincinnati. You in Oakland now, bitch. I was like, oh shit. I said, oh, I can't break up my wife even if I wanted to. I had never seen her go off like that. Nah, motherfucker, you ain't in Cincinnati. You in Oakland now, bitch. <laughs> so, what the fuck? So anyways, uh, that pretty much ended the wedding right there. Uh, everybody kind of dispersed. And, uh, you know, kind of ruined it. Ruined the wedding. And he made it some excuse, you know. And then uh, what was crazy was after the wedding, you know, I didn't calm down a couple months later. Uh, I, uh, we go home to Ohio and I stop by my mom and stepdad's house. Oh, it's, I mean, it was Thanksgiving and, uh, he wants that. So we found after the wedding debacle and then we were kind of made an ass of himself in front of all these people. And I'd always, I'd always told people like my close friends stories about him, but they was like, that shit ain't true. That shit ain't true. And then when the wedding happened and the friends I had at the wedding, they was like, yo, okay, you were telling the truth about all that crazy behavior you used to tell us. And, uh, cause if you go, you're going to throw a punch at somebody's wedding reception when the vibe was amazing. Like it was a wedding. Everybody's having a good time at a wedding. And then, um, so he, after, after the wedding, a couple months later, we're back in Ohio and we go over there for Thanksgiving and he found Jesus for about three months. Like he found Jesus after he made an ass of himself. Then my stepdad found Jesus for a few months and all of a sudden, we're getting ready to eat, and he wants to say grace. We've never went, we never went to church. We never say grace, ever. We just ate. <laughs> Most time, I don't think we ever had a, the only time we ever sat down as a family to eat was holidays. That's because everybody's over, you're over somebody's house. So I'm looking at my brother and my sister, and I'm going, what the fuck? Who's going to say grace? None of us know how. And my stepdad wants to say grace and I will never forget his prayer. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the prayer exactly like he did it. And there's going to be a long pause, but don't stop the video. I'm doing you the real prayer in real time. Like I remember it. We all bowed our heads and we're holding hands. We're like, what? And we're looking down. This is what he did. Dear Lord, Thank you for giving us your word. And showing us the way. Uh, and uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for the troops. That provide us with this blanket of freedom. That we're able to eat this meal. Thank you for the troops. Amen. <laughs> I was like, what kind of prayer was that? No, he didn't think. He didn't like say, hey, thanks for everybody getting here safe. Thank you for my family. All that. Thank you for the troops that provided us with the blanket of freedom. And you know, I've got my head down, so I'm kind of looking as he's saying the prayer. And he's kind of moving his lips, trying to figure out what to say. So he's going, it was a struggle. It was a struggle prayer. Uh, so yeah. That was our wedding, and that's when my stepdad found Jesus for three months. And then slowly it just went away. Uh, definitely not a godly man now. So, all right. Well, I'm going to do one a week. I'm not going to overrun these updates. Uh, but, uh, yeah, 
they're, they're pretty entertaining. If you like that one, it gets better. All right. Uh, so we'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's what, day 19? Jesus Christ. <sighs> Hope this thing ends soon. All right. Talk to you guys later.